My name is Fernando Fervenza. I am a nephrologist at the Division of Nephrology and Hypertension at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. My area of interest is uh, parenchymal renal disease. Um, uh, by this, I mean glomerular diseases uh, that include uh, causes of nephrotic syndrome, vasculitis, uh, systemic lupus, autoimmune diseases of affecting the kidney. Now, what is nephrotic syndrome? Nephrotic syndrome is, um, uh, the name says, is a constellation of signs and symptoms patients uh, 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 excrete an enormous amount of protein in the urine. Because they do that, uh, they lower the uh, protein in the blood or albumin. Uh, then they get it, that result in so, so salt and water retention. Then they develop edema and uh, they have hyperlipidemia. Uh, among the causes, of, of course, worldwide, if we take because of the big numbers, the most common cause uh, is diabetes, um, uh, which is also a number one cause of end-stage renal disease uh, in this country. Patients should be aware, you know, because this disease is progressive, and if your protein urea remains high, the disease will progress. People should not stay around waiting, you know, until you reach to a point of no return, because uh, the kidney uh, um, uh, is like a house that is undergoing fire. Um, when do you call the fireman? Do you you are in the garden and you see that your kitchen is on fire, but then you call the fireman there, or you decide, well, maybe I'm going for a walk around the block, and then I'm going to have a coffee at the corner, and then, well, when, if you do that, when you come back and decide to call the fireman, you may not have any more house, or the fireman may come, but they say, I'm sorry, we we'll, we can, uh, we are turning off the fire, but there is going to be no house left. Traditional view about the disease is, uh, that was uh, um, uh, many years uh, uh, still now uh, uh, said is that is a, uh, is a disease that is a 30 30 30 meaning that one third of the patients will get better spontaneously one third third of the patients will uh, continue to have proteinuria although will be in low grade proteinuria and one third of the patients will uh, continue to have uh, massive proteinuria and those patients are the ones who are going to progress um, and these ones are the ones who needed to be treated. Uh, I don't quite agree entirely with this because in reality, uh, the third, the 30, 30, 30 uh, does not apply in patients who have a uh, very high degree of proteinuria, meaning that if you have eight, 10 or more grams of protein per 24 hours urine, you don't have a 30% chance of uh, going to spontaneous remission. Um, uh, your chances are much less. So um, the, the implication is that, that what the standard recommendation is that these patients should be initially treated uh, with conservative therapy. It applies to those patients, but we need to be more vigilant because those patients are unlikely to go into spontaneous remission during the period that we uh, should wait, for example, like four to six months on conservative therapy. Um, and there is, in my view, no point in waiting longer uh, in these patients because they are not unlikely to go into remission and you're just allowing those patients to continue with uh, suffering from um, the complications of nephrotic syndrome. So new medications that have been available are um, monoclonal antibodies and we have done a couple of studies here at Mayo um, using uh, rituximab. Rituximab is a monoclonal antibody against uh, the CD20 antigen present in the uh, membrane of B cells. So what is the rationale for using those studies? Well, if we consider the membrane nephropathy is an autoimmune disease, and so the antibody must be per, uh, produced by um, cells that are from the B cell lineage. Um, at least animal data has shown that. And more recently, um, groups in Boston and um, in Europe have, in fact, uh, clearly demonstrated that in, in uh, a number of patients like um, uh, uh, with members of the property, antibodies are present in circulation, circulation, and those antibodies react with antigens present in the glomerular uh, uh, or basal membrane of those patients who who have membrane nephropathy. So it has, therefore it makes sense to use um, an antibody, a monoclonal antibody, gets rid of the 
pato potential pathogenic B cells, and by doing that, get rid of the antibody and um, get rid of the disease. The problem is that when we have those pilot studies, the in medicine we need to say that the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So, in the proof of the pudding in medicine is in the randomized control study. So far, we have been having difficulties in f getting funding to a randomized control study using rituximab. We have um, be able to obtain support from a private foundation to fund part of the of the study, and we are planning to start the study uh, at least in a preliminary uh, basis soon, and we will test um, uh, the use of rituximab or the monoclonal antibody against calcineurin inhibitor, which is considered the standard of care in the U.S. in patients with membrane nephropathy. See if. Um, really what the pilot uh, studies show uh, uh, really uh, is true in a larger uh, randomized study. Are we done with membrane nephropathy drugs? Well, no. There is another drug that is um, in Europe that has um, been used quite efficacious. That's called, uh, that is ACTH. ACTH, you have to remember, is a hormone that's produced by the pituitary gland and stimulate our adrenals to produce uh, uh, cortisol. The problem is that the European version is a synthetic version of ACTH that's not available in the United States. However, there is another company uh, in the United States that produces um, uh, animals uh, version of uh, ACTH. Uh, uh, and in fact, um, it has been approved uh, by the FDA for the use of nephrotic syndrome um, over 30 years ago when there was no much requirement for a drug approval and it was drug was approved just based in principle that it could work. Um, but no study ever came from using this drug um, in patient member nephropathy. So we are doing this study at Mayo at the moment um, and we have already enrolled nine patients. Our target goal is to enroll uh, 10 patients. We need uh, a couple of more patients to um, uh, complete the study. Um, first of all, I always encourage patients to participate in clinical studies because patients, um, by the nature of the clinical studies, they are very much scrutinized by the FDA, by the Institutional Review Board, they are uh, that uh, carry the study. Um, and because we don't have a standard therapy for members, I would encourage people to participate in new uh, therapies that are uh, around because this will help uh, other pa patients to, to, in the future, to really uh, reach the goal of finding a better uh, uh, treatment for membrane nephropathy.